Shanaz Latif. I'm a health board member for the UK. I'm delighted to have you on this Healthy Bites podcast, specifically for parents in our Jamaat. Uh, and we're joined here today by Femida Hirji, and we're thinking today about finding our new normal. So, Yali Madad Femida, how are you? Yali Madad Shainaz, um, thank you very much for inviting me onto this uh, podcast. Uh, it's a great honor to try and um, offer some, some ideas and some thoughts on, on finding a new norm and what that means for us really in, in, in this time. Thank you. And Famida is a psychotherapist and occupational therapist. Uh, Famida, tell us about your family situation. So Shainaz, at the moment, I am, well, at the moment, I, I, I am a mother um, of two children, um, a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. Um, and they um, are both at home at the moment, as are all children. Um, and um, as with a lot of parents, we are trying to juggle and, and manage and keep everybody safe. The first question, which is, can you tell us why routine is important? Yes, um, routine. Why is routine important? Why are we being told um, everywhere we go, everything we read, that routine is essential? Why? Well, routine allows us to have a sense of control. Routine allows us to have some predictability. I think at the moment to feel contained and to bring that into our um, lives, into our daily lives is going to be something quite important. It can be comforting, it can be containing. Um, as, as much as we are social creatures, we're also creatures of habit. And incorporating habits into our daily lives will give us that sense of, of control that, that we feel we might be losing at the moment. Routine. Routine can also give us um, some uh, efficiency and focus and it can allow us to have goals and it can give us good uh, incentive to, to build new habits. So when we talk about a new norm, we're talking about actually building new habits and building a new normal um, and perhaps moving away from the things that we, we didn't used to do. Um, so it, it, it can be an important part of, of creating some sort of comfort and well-being. Lovely. So how do you think we could go about structuring our day? So structure can be quite an, an important part of, our, of the way that we bring routine into our daily lives. Things are changing, things have changed, things are changing. Um, even within our situations of being at home, we have gone from the children having structure and routine because they've had schoolwork into a now situation whereby children are, are effectively on holiday. What does that mean? How is that going to look in our homes? Are we still going to incorporate a sense of, of academia into the days? Probably not, our children probably won't accept that, but we will still need to have some sort of structure within our days. Um, when children are at home, things, things are different. Everything's different at the moment. What, what do we want to have in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis in order to incorporate a sense of well-being? One of the things that um, I often work with um, when, when it comes to um, working with, with people is the wellness wheel. So the wellness wheel um, incorporates different aspects and themes of our life. Um, we can bring that up now so you can have a little look. Okay, so here we go. Here we have the wellness wheel. If you look at this wellness wheel, it, it will be very well, quite clear for a lot of you to see how important it is to have different elements of our life into our daily routines. We've had a lot of talk around social importance and how important it is for us to remain socially connected to the people in our lives. Intellectual, well, we have that because we are being stimulated with schoolwork and, and often a lot of us have um, work that we are focusing on. Physical, again, it's really been drummed into us. Please keep active, please keep movement up. These, these things are essential to our well-being. But the ones that I'd like to particularly talk about today is emotional and occupational. 
Um, and I will bring in spiritual later, but emotional, what do we mean by emotional structure? Why do we need that within our days? Emotional structure, emotional wellness is the ability to understand ourselves and then cope with the challenges that life brings. We know right now that life is very challenging. We know that right now life may have moments of, of feeling quite stressed. How are we going to combat that? How are we going to have emotional wellness? Well, we're going to talk about it. We're going to share our feelings. We're going to share how we feel with the people in, in our homes and with people who are not in our homes, people who we feel comfortable with. What does that look like? Well, if we're having a bad day or if we're feeling a little bit down, we will say that. We will explain to people, this is what's going on for me at the moment. And people will help us to accept that, that maybe that's just a part of what life is, is like at the moment. Similarly, if we're feeling good about something or if we feel that we've achieved something that day or if we've managed to accomplish something in, in whatever small way that day, that can be quite a nice thing to share with people too. Occupational, what do we mean by that? Well, essentially, in, in this section, I'm talking about productivity. Productivity can look like many things to many people. To some of us, it will look like work. To some others, it might look like domestic activities. For other people, it might, might mean you're managing to finish something that you haven't done a lot for a long time. It's about meaning, it's about purpose, it's about the ability to feel good about something that you've done. And I think I can't stress enough the importance of, of how this can look different for each and every one of us. It's about allowing ourselves to feel a sense of accomplishment. What have we done today that's made us feel good about ourselves? Um, the wellness wheel is something really, really interesting for all of us to think about. Thank you so much. I really like the um, wellness wheel that you've got there. So those are all different aspects we can think about configuring into our days. Um, do you have a final top tip for us, for me there for today? Um, I, I would love to share a top tip with you, Shainaz. I think my, my top tip, um, I mean, I, I am a therapist and I suppose this is something that I, I live by and something that I say is please embrace the emotional states that you find yourself in. There are going to be good days and there are going to be bad days. And I feel it's very important for us to accept that that is very, very normal and healthy in this situation at the moment. And for us to accept all states that we might find ourselves in. I also feel that the spiritual part of the wellness wheel is, is really an essential part for all of us. We will need quiet time. We will need time to reflect. We will need time to come together and congregate. We will need time to bond. And I think bonding through a spiritual element, through prayer, through tasbi, through thinking about others, through practicing gratitude, I think this will be something that the family can focus on during a certain part of the day and I, I sincerely believe it will bring us a sense of well-being and happiness during these very very strange times that we're living through right now. Wonderful thank you so much for your time I wish your family well and to everybody who's listening in. Thank you Shainaz I appreciate you having me on this podcast and I'm wishing everybody who's listening well and stay healthy and happy thank you.